hello again. Oh, hello for the first time. If this is the first time you've come across my channel, bear with me a second. I just removed my legs. I, really, I should turn the camera off a little bit. There we go. Oh. Yeah, there we go. Hi, I'm Paul Murphy. And um, I'm reading from this here. Um, uh, and it's got... Oh. Is it just me or is my hair spiking up everywhere? <laughs> yeah. Where did we get to? Right, so I'm sure you've already seen this in the title, but actually, yeah, so you know I'm just about to read from this book here, and I'm the spoof. Where's the front cover? That's the back cover. The viewfinder shows everything the wrong way around, which is why I'm looking over there instead of directly into your eyes. I do apologise. Let's have some good eye contact. Hey there, how you doing? Thank you for coming along. Moldova. Name. <laughs> Let's start from scratch. Okay, off we go. Moldova. Named after their particularly poor council houses, which had mould over everything, in antiquity, Moldova's territory was inhabited by Dacian tribes, an Indo-European people, part of or related to the Thracians and the Gnu. Between the 1st and 7th centuries AD, the south was intimately under the Roman and then the Byzantine empires. Whose turn is it today? The Byzantine king would ask the Romans. Well, I think it's you lot. Uh, they were under us yesterday, but we'll need you to do a double shift at the weekend. We're invading Gaul in the morning and a traffic terrible. Due to its strategic location on a route between Asia and Europe, the territory of modern Moldova was invaded many times in late antiquity and the early Middle Ages as well, including by Goths, Huns, Avars, Bulgarians, Magyars, Pecha Kings, Cumans, Mongols, Tartars, Smiths, Joneses, Cauliflowers, Hamsters, Nuns on Pogo Sticks, and a canoe. <laughs> After this, they moved the country 500 miles east to try and get some peace. Unfortunately, 500 miles east was the middle of an early Chinese motorway, and much of the populace was accidentally run over by camels. <laughs> While most of those left were deliberately run over by cows. <laughs> Others still jumped under cows as they did not wish to appear stuck up. <laughs> I do apologize. I haven't read this in about two years since I last did, um, um, last did uh, an online reading of it at a concert. So I'm, I'm having a chucklesome morning here. Of course, I'm reading it, not listening to the with motor neuron disease, trying to enunciate the words. But anyway, you can always bring up the closed caption subtitles, can't you? They'll probably say, watch another video. We're nearly at the end now, folks. With their population now... <laughs> with their... Po <laughs> with their population now in the low 20s, they moved the country back to where it was and made camel meat their national dish. The medieval principality of Moldova was established in 1359 and covered the so-called Carpathian Danube Dniester area, stretching from Transylvania in the west to the Dniester River in the east, and a very long stretch it was too. The greatest Moldovian personality was Prince Stephen the Great, who ruled from 1457 to 1504 and had his own reality show to prove it. He fought the Hungarian Kingdom, the Polish Kingdom, and the Ottoman Empire, whether they wanted to or not. <laughs> he seized the crown in 1457, aided by one Vlad Dracula of Wallachia, and was lucky not to become lunch's payment. Stephen was succeeded by increasingly weaker princes, and in 1538, <clears throat> pardon me, <clears throat> I'm just going to clear my throat. You can come into land. All passengers for flight Epiglothus. <laughs> Boarding now. <sighs> Stephen was succeeded by increasingly weaker princes, and in 1538 Moldova became a vassal of the Ottoman Empire, to which it owed a percentage of the internal revenue that in time rose to 10%, until it got an offshore account at the Cayman Islands and wrote it off against stock. That, I do believe, was a, a then satirical... This is how satire has got a very short shelf life. Um... And although I know some shelves that have been going on for 30 years, the products on the shelf, however, have a very short life. Where was I going with this? Oh, yeah, and there was something about David Cameron, I think. Um, uh, I think he was Prime Minister of England for one afternoon. And, um, and they just hung around the job because uh, no one could get a cheese grater onto his private parts to convince him to go elsewhere. Um, and he had an offshore account in the Caymans. There, I've 
completely thrown everyone off track. Now, let's get back on track. In 1775, the Habsburg monarchy annexed approximately 11% of the territory of Moldavia, which then became known as Bukovina. By the time of the Treaty of Bucharest following the Russo-Turkish War, 1806-1812, Russia had annexed a further 50% of its territory, which became known as Basarabia. Do we get to keep anything? cried the Moldavians. Uh, yes, the sewers and Mrs. Valletta Sludge, replied the Russians. Well, we'll accept the sewers, the Moldavians responded. Do you know what? It's uh, not so funny mentioning the word Russia now, is it, since I wrote this? Anyway, after 1918, Bessarabia was under Romanian jurisdiction for the next 22 years. For God's sake, leave us alone, cried the citizens. We've had to change our passports every three weeks for the last 450 years. <laughs> Having become fed up with being invaded by anybody with nothing better to do on a Sunday, Moldova tried changing its name to This Is Not Moldova and, <laughs> and cunningly dressed the populace as camels to hide from everybody. Sadly, the decree never reached Mrs. Sludge, who was busy knitting a porcupine day. <laughs> And she dined well on the national dish for many years to come. Fun fact. The average female height in Moldova in 2005 was 1.612 metres, 5 feet 3 inches. In 2015 it was 1.01 metres, 3 foot 2 inches, which caused widespread panic amongst politicians, who thought they might have to do something to earn their wages. Our women are shrinking, cried the Office of National Statistics and Custard. We should have washed them at 30 degrees, replied the men, praying they'd stupidly get in the naughty bits. <gasps> Brackets, the panic subsided when it was discovered that the survey was taken when they were sitting down. <gasps> I've been Paul Murphy. You've been extremely kind and generous for your time. And that was the, what was it, Moldova, was it? I think it was the Moldova chapter on my this book here. There's lots more readings of it for me, from me to come. I'll just lean myself forward here. Thank you so much for your time. You're very kind, lovely people.